Hi, I'm Mike Leiden, Chair of the Navy Supply Corps Foundation. Now we'd like to be bringing you this event live today, but like most other things in our life, it has to be done virtually. But no matter when you watch it or where you watch it from, we want to welcome you to a special event. It's our distinct pleasure today and honor to be able to recognize the latest recipient of the Foundation's Distinguished Alumni Award. We're here to honor Rear Admiral Ted Walker, or more affectionately known to most of us as simply the Admiral. Well, I'm here in West River, Maryland in front of the Admiral's boat. She's a fine old lady. She's given years of devoted service, just as the Admiral has. Her beautiful lines and upkeep reflect the tremendous dedication to excellence that Admiral Walker brought to every position in both his military and civilian careers. The name, very appropriate, at ease. Well, Admiral Walker, stand at ease today as we give you some very well-deserved recognition. And again, thank you all for joining us and let's get on with it. Hello, my name is Captain Retired Dan Pionk and I'm the Executive Director of the Navy Supply Corps Foundation. I'd like to thank you for joining the Foundation on this special event where we will induct Admiral Retired Ted Walker as well as the Navy Supply Corps Foundation's distinguished alumni. But first, since we have some guests from outside the supply community, let me spend a brief moment on our foundation. Our membership consists of everyone who has ever worn the oak leaf as a supply corps officer, including veterans, active duty, and reserve. Once you graduate from the Navy Supply Corps School, you are a member for life. The foundation traces its history back to 1970. And our vision is to be the go-to nonprofit that globally supports and unifies the Navy Supply Corps community and preserves its heritage and traditions. The lifeblood of the foundation rests with its chapters. As of today, there are 38 chapters worldwide in places such as Japan, Djibouti, Bahrain, Sicily, Spain, and all across the United States. We deliver a full range of programs, including scholarships, recognition, such as this evening's Distinguished Alumni Award, heritage, including a vintage Oak Leaf Club of members over 90 years old, family assistance, and transition support. In short, we take care of our own across the Supply Corps community. I would now like to introduce Captain Retired Bud Schiff, a board member of the Foundation, who provides some background on the Distinguished Alumni Award and some of our past recipients of the award. So Bud, over to you. Thank you. I'm retired Navy Supply Corps Captain Bud Schiff, a Supply Corps Distinguished Alumnus and a member of the Navy Supply Corps Foundation Board. The Distinguished Alumni Program was established to recognize retired and former Supply Corps officers who have gone on to distinguish themselves with outstanding contributions in the public or private sectors. Each of them have three things in common. One, they were successful Supply Corps officers. Two, they had significant career achievements after the Supply Corps. And three, they credit their Supply Corps experiences as the basic foundation for their further per professional achievements. The Distinguished Alumni roster includes Melvin Laird, J.W. Marriott Jr., the late Regis Philbin, Roger Staubach, and Vice Admiral Retired Ed Straw. Other names may not be as familiar, but several of the institutions they have led are well known, such as Lockheed, General Mills, United Airlines, PepsiCo, New York Life, and others. You can visit the Navy Supply Corps Foundation website to review the full list of previous distinguished alumni, representing the best of government, academia, business, and industry. We'll give you extra credit if you can identify any of the DAs shown here. That brings me to our newest distinguished alumnus, 
Rear Admiral retired Ted Walker, who we recognize today. Thank you, bud. It's now my distinct pleasure to introduce the Foundation's Chairman, Rear Admiral retired Mike Leiden, who will be the Master of Ceremonies for today's event. Rear Admiral Leiden, over to you, sir. Well, hello again. For the rest of the program, I'll be joining you from my home in Alexandria, Virginia. Now, I hope you enjoyed our brief overviews of the Navy Supply Corps Foundation, and in particular, our Distinguished Alumni Program. Well, thanks to Bud and Dan for getting us started, and now it's time to move on to the main part of our ceremony today. Now, we'll be joining Rebel Walker over on his boat at ease shortly, but right now it's my distinct honor to introduce our guest speaker for today, Vice Admiral Retired Ed Straw. Admiral Straw graduated from the U.S. Naval Academy and went on to a 35-year distinguished career in the Navy and DOD. His career culminated with selection to the rank of Vice Admiral and assignment as the Director of the Defense Logistics Agency, the largest military logistics command in the world. Leveraging this experience when he retired from the Navy, he moved into senior executive positions in global operations and logistics at Ryder Integrated Logistics, Compact Computers, and the Estee Lauder companies. Since then, he's been involved in numerous initiatives, in particular in investment capital, and he's helped young entrepreneurs move into the business and learn the skills. He also sits on the Defense Science Board and several corporate and organization boards. What we know him for in the Supply Corps is his tremendous dedication to the supply officers themselves. For decades, he's been an incredible mentor to generations of supply officers. And we all know that he loves the Supply Corps, the Navy, and our nation. Ladies and gentlemen, let me present Vice Admiral Ed Straw. Sir, over to you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and a special good afternoon to Admiral Ted Walker and his extended family. Oh, how I wish we could be doing this ceremony in person today. For one thing, I could tell you some stories about the Admiral that neither of us would want to have recorded. It's also a shame that we cannot be meeting in person to shake his hand over receiving this well-deserved and long overdue Navy Supply Corps Foundation Distinguished Alumni Award. I think everyone, including me, assumed that Ted was among the very first ever received this award. Today, we make up for this unintentional oversight. Keep in mind, this Distinguished Alumni Award is given to primarily recognize the awardee's contributions after his Navy career. Let me repeat that after his Navy career. And while I understand this, I will be talking about his achievements in both his Navy and private sector careers. I will tell you some stories that you would not read in his impressive bio. I will start with his 34 year Navy career. He graduated from Annapolis as the youngest man in the class of 1954 and then graduated with the first class to attend the Navy Supply Corps School that had been relocated from Bayonne, New Jersey to beautiful Athens, Georgia. After graduating from Athens, he went into a distinguished career that covered every critical job in the Navy Supply Corps, starting with the battleship New Jersey to the destroyer Wren and back-to-back -back Navy exchange tours. Yes, I said back-to-back -back Navy exchange tours. The second one in Panama. I once to ask Walker, who was the detailer that was trying to derail his career? To which he said, Eddie, my boy, I learned more about inventory management in the Navy exchange business than anywhere in my career. You have no idea how hard it is to keep 52 shades of lipstick or 36 sizes of brassieres in stock. Following these Navy exchange tours, he served at the Naval Supply Depot in Newport, Rhode Island, 
And then he returned to sea duty as the first ever supply officer of a submarine squadron. In 1970, he graduated from the George Washington University with an MBA and then spent eight straight years supporting the Navy submarine force. On a submarine tender, as program and budget officer for the Deputy Chief of Naval Operations for Submarines, and as the Force Supply Officer for the Commander Submarine Force Atlantic Fleet. Following Sublant, it was the Executive Officer of SPCC, Commanding Officer of the Naval Supply Center Puget, Chief of Staff Logistics for the Commander in Chief Atlantic Fleet, Commanding Officer of the Navy Accounting and Finance Center, and then Commander, Naval Supply Systems Command, Chief of Supply Corps from 1984 to 1988, where I worked for him all four years. I could tell you stories about those four years for the rest of the day, but I will tell you only one that from my perspective may be the most important achievement in his Navy career, and one you will not find in his official biography or ever hear him discuss. It goes like this. In 1985, the Naval Investigative Service arrested a smuggling ring that was stealing F-14 parts and selling them to Iran, who needed them for the 100 F-14 fighter aircraft they bought from the United States prior to the fall of the Shah in the late 70s. Initially, investigators claimed that the parts were coming from the aircraft carrier USS Kitty Hawk. And in a rather tense meeting in the Pentagon that I attended with Admiral Walker, the Chief of Naval Operations demanded that Admiral Walker immediately fire the senior supply officer on Kitty Hawk, a recently deep selected commander with a stellar reputation. The CNO also sarcastically asked Admiral Walker why the Navy even needed a supply corps. With steam coming out of his ears, Admiral Walker pounded on the conference table, stood up all six foot five of him, and forcefully responded that he would not fire the commander until more evidence was found that proved Kitty Hawk to be the source of the stolen parts. And he strongly defended the value of the supply corps over its 200 year history. Admiral Walker then launched an audit in conjunction with the Navy Audit Service and the Naval Investigative Service that led to evidence proving that the parts were not coming from the Kitty Hawk or any organization within the Navy Supply Systems Command. From my perspective, Admiral Walker's decisive actions during this period actually saved, saved the Navy Supply Corps. Next, allow me to summarize his outstanding private sector career. Shortly after his retirement, he became Vice President Administration and Strategic Planning for RCI Incorporated. At the time, RCI was a small consulting company with 350 employees and annual revenue of $26 million. When Admiral Walker retired after 11 years, the company had grown to 1,600 employees and a revenue of 350 million per year. The CEO of RCI was a friend of mine and once told me that the growth of the company and the growth of its reputation was in large part due to Admiral Walker's advice, counsel, and the new employees that he recruited to the company. Admiral Walker tells me that they were all retired Supply Corps officers. During this period, he also served as vice chairman of the board of Hurley Industries, a world-class design and manufacturer of defense and aerospace electronic systems and sensors. Admiral Walker has served on the board of directors of the Navy Memorial at 11th and Pennsylvania Avenue for 30 years and three years as its CEO and president. As a longtime supporter of the Navy Memorial, I will tell you another story, not in Ted's biography. During his three years as CEO, his leadership and management helped save, note that word save again, 
help save the Navy Memorial from serious financial problems by rapidly improving financial management, by improving fundraising campaigns, and by dramatically improving relationships with the Chief of Naval Operations and the Secretary of the Navy. Admiral Walker is a longtime benefactor of the Navy Memorial Foundation. As you might expect, he minimizes the impact he has had on the Navy Memorial, but I will back up my statement with the fact that the Navy Memorial Visitor Center Log Room is named in honor of Rear Admiral Ted Walker. Over the last 30 years, Admiral Walker has also proudly served on the board of directors of the Vincent Hall Retirement Community in McLean, Virginia, where he currently resides. He became treasurer of Vincent Hall in 1989 and subsequently became chairman of the board of directors. Those who remember Vincent Hall in the late 80s and 90s would tell you that he restored financial stability to the organization, and then played a major advisory role in the construction of the Arleigh Burke Pavilion and the recently completed residence building. Ted is especially proud of his 40-year association with Elon University in North Carolina, where his daughters graduated in the late 70s. He served on the Elon Board of Visitors for eight years, is proud of his role in assisting over 120 young men and women get accepted at Elon, and to see Elon go from an unfamiliar rural school to one of the most highly regarded universities in the South. He has been a strong supporter and benefactor to the Elon Athletic Department and proud of his efforts to help Elon get accepted into the Colonial Athletic Association, where they have gone to the Division I FCS football championship playoffs twice in the last three years. As most of you know, Admiral Walker has never lost his love for the United States Navy. He has served as a trustee of the United States Naval Academy Foundation for the past 30 years, is an avid supporter of Navy athletics, a major donor to the Naval Academy Foundation, and has rarely missed a home football game or Army-Navy game in over 50 years. I am certain that Ted Walker bleeds Navy blue and gold. Admiral Walker, I am deeply honored, deeply honored that you asked me to speak today. You, sir, are my longtime mentor and treasured friend, and I know that everyone watching this virtual ceremony has equally strong admiration for you as an outstanding Naval officer, successful businessman, devoted husband, loving father, volunteer, and benefactor. Congratulations on this well-deserved and long overdue award. I know that Carol Ann is looking down right now with great pride and a big smile on her face. And I believe I hear her whispering, that Ted could not have done it without me. And I also know that Ted would be the first to admit it. May God bless you, sir, and may God bless America. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Admiral Straw. Now, I didn't mention in my introduction to the Admiral what a tremendous speaker he is but now you've seen and heard for yourself. I don't know anyone that could capture the achievements of Admiral Walker's career as well as Admiral Straw just did and with the same passion. So sir, thank you. You've really given us the background and the foundation for this presentation. So now there's only one thing to do, make the presentation. Now normally I'd invite, invite uh, Admiral Walker up to the podium with me to receive the award, but as you can see, I'm in Alexandria, so we'll have to do it virtually. So the first part is my presentation. We'll make it official with the certificate. Navy Supply Corps Foundation Distinguished Alumnus Award to all who shall see these presents greeting. Know that the Navy Supply Corps Foundation has selected Rear Admiral Edward K. Ted Walker Jr. Supply Corps United States Navy retired as a distinguished alumnus of the Navy Supply Corps for lifelong achievement and dedicated service to the Supply Corps 
and civilian community given this date, November 2020, by the Chairman Navy Supply Corps Foundation, Mike Lydon, myself. So, Admiral Walker, congratulations on your induction into the Distinguished Alumni Program of the Navy Supply Corps Foundation. So everyone in your own way, please give a clap and uh, congratulate the Admiral. Now we also have a small memento of your selection, Admiral Walker, and it's an uh, engraved clock, and I'll read it. 2019 Distinguished Alumnus Award to Rear Admiral Ted Walker, Supply Corps, United States Navy, retired as a distinguished member of the Navy Supply Corps for a lifelong achievement and dedicated service. Thank you. Well, that makes it official. Admiral Ted Walker is our newest recipient of the Supply Corps Distinguished Alumnus Award. Now, at this point, I'd like to turn it over to the Admiral. So we're gonna go back to at ease and listen to him. So Admiral Walker, congratulations. And please, sir, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, Mike, uh, for this wonderful day. I want to also thank, obviously, the many folks that helped you put this together, and Eddie Straw for his kind remarks. It's a real privilege to be included uh, as an awardee. Uh, when you come to think about it, I, we're, we've got some very distinguished prior receptors. Uh, uh, Bill Merritt, for one, uh, uh, Regis Philbin, uh, Roger Staubach, and of course, our own Ed Straw. It really is, is very, very humbling to get this award, and I appreciate everything about it. I would like to say to all of you who are watching, each and every one of you, this is your award. And the reason is, I'm sure you're watching because you either work with me or for me, or I work for you, or you are a longtime personal friend, such as my folks at CYC, and I want you to know that whether you and I got to know each other or you and I and Carol Ann got to know each other as couples, you have impacted my professional life as a naval officer and a supply officer, you've impacted my private life, and you've impacted my commercial life after my service. And in that context, you all have shaped my life influenced my life wonderfully and positively. I believe that I have the greatest circle of friends and associates that ever existed. You each and every one of you are important to me in context of the whole and in each and every one of you as an individual have impacted my life so positively and I appreciate all that you brought to make my life so wonderful and so successful, particularly in the endeavors after the Navy, which was kind of a open season for me. I didn't know what to expect. In the end, I had wonderful success in the commercial end for about 10 or 12 years. And I had great success in the private area trying to support the Naval Academy, the Navy Memorial, the Navy Supply Corps Foundation, Elon University, and so on. And that's a different ball game and very exciting. And I had a wonderful, wonderful career, and I had a wonderful retirement. And I just want to thank you all, each and every one of you, for the wonderful impact you've had on my life and continue to have. And I pray that you will come by and visit me and keep in touch because my contact with you is so important. And I, Jen, want to thank you all and thank the Foundation for thinking of me for this very prestigious award. And again, I am most humble to receive it. And I'll see you, each of you, I hope, in the near future. Thanks again for attending. And thank you, all of you, for this award, which you gave to me. Emma Walker, thank you so much for those wonderful words. We know they come from your heart. And they clearly demonstrate the concern and commitment and dedication that you brought to the Navy, the Supply Corps, and all of the organizations that have been blessed with your participation. 
I join with all of the members of those organizations, all of the Supply Corps officers that have been touched by you over the years, and all of your friends, in congratulating you on a well-deserved recognition. So Admiral, enjoy the moment and stand at ease. I'd like to give a quick shout out to our team that helped put together today's ceremony. Led by our executive director, Dan Pionk, and his team of Cindy Inglet, Tara Neville, and Dina McMaster. And also to our bo two board members, Bud Schiff and Pete Eltingham, who work with our distinguished alumni and our recognition programs. So thanks to all of them, and thank you everyone for joining us for this special event. Thank you.